Welcome from Spartan Athletic Park, folks. We've got football on the way, and we're going to tell you all about it here in the regular season finale for one team and the season finale for the other. It's Aurora and Concordia, Wisconsin coming up. But first, it is time to recognize our seniors for 2022 here for Aurora University. Up first, the quarterback from Waukesha, Wisconsin, currently in the NBA program, Josh Swanson. Some point. 
right, folks? Senior day is ready to go, and as I was saying, we'll start with a quarterback from Waukesha, Wisconsin, currently in the NBA program, Josh Swanson. Josh is accompanied by his parents, Steve and Jody. Josh plans to acquire his CPA after graduation and work as an auditor for Grant Thornton. Josh Swanson. Up next, a linebacker from Olive Branch, Mississippi, a business administration major, and last week's NAC Defensive Player of the Week, folks, Kaysen Burris. After graduation, Kaysen will begin a career as a financial advisor. Kaysen Burris. tight end from Madison, Wisconsin, and exercise science major, Tyler Duncan. Described by head coach Don Beebe as an exceptional blocking tight end, by the way, folks. He's accompanied by his parents, Chandra and Jason. After graduation, Tyler plans to pursue a career as a personal trainer while coaching football. From Shanahan, Illinois, a kicker and athletic training major, Austin Wilgos. He's accompanied by his parents, Jennifer and John. After graduation, Austin plans to begin a career as an athletic trainer. and offensive lineman from Bolingbrook, Illinois, a Masters in Business Administration candidate, Jackson Nazos. Jackson's accompanied by his mother, Rochelle. After graduation, Jackson plans to begin a career working with a professional sports team. Next, an offensive lineman from Lockport, Illinois, and a communication major, Chris Toth. Chris is accompanied by his parents, Gail and Tom. After graduation, Chris has plans and aspirations to play on Sundays in the National Football League. Chris Toth. Offensive lineman from Newark, Illinois, a criminal justice major, James Shankle. James is accompanied by his parents, Jim and Denise. After graduation, James plans to begin a career in law enforcement as a police officer. James Shankle. Final senior is a wide receiver from Wheaton, Illinois, a communication major, Cameron Moore. Cam is, is accompanied by parents Walter and Janae. After graduation, Cam has plans and aspirations to continue his football career as a professional. Cam Moore. seniors being honored today are on the field. We thank them for their contributions to Aurora University and the Spartan football program. Senior Day 2022 here at Spartan Athletic Park. So we honor the 
seniors, and then we will turn our attention to deciding who will represent the NAC in the NCAA playoffs. We'll set the scene coming up here at athletics.aurora.edu. folks we will determine who will be in the playoffs and whose season will come to an end with two losses one of these teams is already a conference champion will they share it or will they win it outright and play next week from spartan athletic park is today's northern athletics collegiate conference Football matchup between the visiting Falcons of Concordia University, Wisconsin, and your Spartans of Aurora University. So glad you're with us on this Saturday afternoon. My name is Sean Fry. The de facto NAC championship game here today. Aurora clinched a share last week after hammering Lakeland by a 68 to nothing margin. And folks, having been here, I can tell you that it may not have even been that close. Aurora gained 600, oh, I just said 653, that's not right, but I promise you it was a healthy amount. 611 yards while allowing Lakeland only 168. It was over very quickly as Aurora put up 13 points and never really let off the gas pedal in some very difficult conditions. Concordia, Wisconsin got everything that they wanted from Wisconsin Lutheran, a 
Warriors team that really had very little to play for. Concordia, Wisconsin needed to get the win to make this game meaningful. And although they led only 17 to 14 at halftime, pulled away with four touchdowns after halftime in a 45 to 21 victory. That was 573 yards of offense for the Falcons to 231 for the Warriors. Another nice day for quarterback James Lynn, a very experienced starting quarterback for the Falcons. And Asher Thomas with 162 yards rushing and a couple of scores. He had a fantastic day to lead the Falcons into this one where a victory would mean playing in the NCAA playoffs next week. It's going to be tough for the Falcons. It'll be just as tough for the Spartans here on a cold day. Aurora leads the conference in, well, frankly, almost everything at this point. The second highest scoring team in the country, trailing only North Central. And to put that in context, that's by a full touchdown trailing our neighbors to the east, uh, but also leading the knack in total offense, second narrowly in rushing offense, and leading the conference might have expected in passing touchdowns. They even lead the country, sharing the national lead there. And then defensively, Aurora has been sensational. 20th best in the nation, allowing only 13 points per game. They lead the NAC in total defense, in rushing defense. And also they lead the country, sharing that one in interceptions. Aurora has feasted on takeaways. They have the seventh best turnover margin in the, in the nation and the fourth best number of takeaways. Aurora has taken away 27 possessions. That is three per game, ladies and gentlemen. So Aurora has been dominant offensively. They've been dominant defensively. And when you look at the numbers for Concordia, Wisconsin, largely third, fourth, fifth in the conference. But what matters is what you do in the box score. And Concordia, Wisconsin comes in at the same 8-1 and one mark that Aurora is at. The only difference is one game in the next standings. The Spartans have won all seven. CUW has won six of seven, falling only to Benedictine by a 55-17 margin in their conference opener. It's been six straight wins since, and it's enough to take them into this game with a chance to punch a ticket to the NCAA playoffs. It is going to be a fun one here in Chile, Montgomery, Illinois. Game number 10 of the season. The NAC Championship on the way here at athletics.aurora.edu.
Spartans have taken the field here, ladies and gentlemen. Aurora and Concordia, Wisconsin for the NAC automatic bid to the NCAA playoffs. We'll find out who's going to win it over the next 60 minutes of football. Season's wrapping up all around the NAC today. Nearing halftime, St. Norbert leads Concordia Chicago 17 to nothing. Benedictine is home to Wisconsin Lutheran this afternoon and it's Lakeland at home against Rockford in the season finale. So as we come in, St. Norbert at five and two, Benedictine and Wisconsin Lutheran tied at four and three in the league. So they'll decide no worse than fourth place for the winner of that one today. Concordia Chicago and Lakeland both two and five. Rockford just trying to get into the win column here as they wrap up the season at Lakeland. Eureka has already concluded its schedule at two and six on the season. Lots going on for Aurora today, including men's soccer participating today in the first round of the NCAA tournament. They are at Gustavus Adolphus in St. Peter, Minnesota, but looking like the season is about to come to an end here for the Spartans as they trail two nil with under seven minutes to play in that one. We'll keep you posted on that. But one way or the other, a terrific season for the AU men's soccer team, NAC tournament champions and deserving NCAA tournament participants this year. First time for the Spartans since 2006. The AU men's and women's cross country teams are competing at the division three regional today. So good luck to those as should actually both be underway if not completed by now. We'll bring you some results if we're able to later today. Men's wrestling is at Milliken today. AU women's hockey visits Finlandia at three o'clock. AU women's basketball is at Webster for a three o'clock tip today. And AU men's hockey is going to be at home against Finlandia for a seven o'clock start. So AU men's and women's hockey are at home today. Right now, let's pause for the playing of the National Anthem. By your very own Aurora University Pep Band. We are just about set for football of the coin toss here at a matter of moments. And then we'll start to determine who will be playing next week. Sean Fry with you. Dylan Lyman on the camera. We are happy to have him here with us today. The officials, referee is Jeremy Mancilla, umpire Stacy Pegus. Brett Anderson, the headline judge. Kevin Kroniak is the line judge. Steve McLaughlin, side judge. It's Anthony Walker, the field judge, and the back judge today is Scott Stanzak. And the officials being announced to the crowd here today. Let's meet the starting lineups. First on offense, 
for the Spartans of Aurora University, led by head coach Don Beebe, trying to go to the NCAA tournament for the third time. And looking to win here another NAC championship. 2019, spring 2021, winning a divisional title last season, and now a share of this season. Aurora has won the toss and deferred. And so why don't we put a pin in the AU offense and instead bring you the starters for the Aurora University defense. On the front line, it's Cole Tandy, Jalen Jordan, Jared Pratt, and Otis Watts. Linebackers today, Christian Bauer and Marcellus Ramius. Giancarlo Marjorejo, the nickel back today. And then the corners, Zaya Smith and Ben Slatkoff, Connor Nordmeyer and Ernesto Ramirez, the safeties for the Spartans today. Greg Etter leads the Falcons of Concordia University, Wisconsin. Four-year starter James Lynn under center here today. He'll have Ashar Thomas in the backfield with him, fresh off a big day against Wisconsin Lutheran, 161 yards. Wideouts are Samuel Campbell Jr., Christian Booker, and Ryan Ginterberg with TJ Harold at tight end. Left to right across the offensive line, Drew Mickelson, Tavon Pratt, Andrew Elmhurst, Jarrell Carey and Tyler Prouty. And six seniors, a couple of juniors, and three sophomores in the starting lineup. Tim Houlihan, a second team all conference wide receiver. As we begin today's action, number 46, Austin Wogut, has trying to pitch for the not appeared here in a handful of games for CUW. We'll see if he will be able to get in later in this one. Austin Wilgo set to kick it away and start us off on the drama today, although we are going to have to wait to have the ball re-teed here. Not a strong wind, but one that we will have to contend with nevertheless. 33 degrees here as we get set to kick it off. Winds northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. So wheel goes. Line drive kick here. Skips into the end zone and CUW will Begin with the football at their own 25-yard line. 31 points per game for CUW. 374 yards of total offense on average this season. See what they can do here against the Spartans. CUW in all white moving right to left today. Aurora with white helmets and then an all-black uniform below that. We will see Lynn in the pistol with Thomas behind him. Three receivers and a tight end. One safety high here for the Spartans stacked on the near side, and it's going to be Thomas getting the carry on first down and getting back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. Thomas did not appear in the five games prior to last Saturday after having a couple of 100-yard games through his first three appearances, or stand corrected after having won through his first three appearances, and, and a career best day on Saturday. Second and ten now, shotgun look, trips to the left, they'll give it to Thomas again, and once again, not very much. He goes up the middle and gets a yard. The Aurora rushing defense has been very difficult this season. In the top 25 in the country, they allow 73 yards per game. And they're the best third down defense in the NAC. 31% converted. That's a top 50 mark. CUW at 39% as they line it up here. Trips to the right. Shotgun look here for Lynn. A fifth year senior from California. That's a signal here from the sideline as the play clock runs down to 10. Minute and change gone here on the opening drive of the game. Play clock down to three. Snap gets away. Lynn. Good protection, delivers it, it's tipped and picked off. Marcellus Ramius and Aurora will have the ball in the Falcons' end. Lynn had all day, had superb protection, but the throw was off the line into double coverage, and Marcellus Ramius has his second interception of the season. AU with the football with 13.34 remaining in the first and the ball on the Concordia, Wisconsin, 35. So 
So a max protect shotgun look here for Aurora. Three receivers. Now Duncan motions up as tight end here as it's play action. And Swanson throws it to the middle and maybe a bit behind Trey Matson there as it goes off of his shoulder and incomplete. Josh Swanson, the senior quarterback with Jaquay Creedon in the backfield. Trey Madsen, Cameron Moore, and Michael Bolin, the starting wideouts. Tyler Duncan at tight end. It's Chris Toth, Matt Kickle, Jackson Nazos, Jalen Cole, and James Shankle on the offensive line. Ten seniors and a junior starting today for Aurora. Second and ten from the 35. Pistol this time. This time Creighton gets the football and goes up the middle. And will be taken down after a gain of five. It looked like that was Justice Canetta. We're likely going to call his name a lot here today. One of the leaders in the country, just shy of 100 tackles on the season. He's in the top 15 in the nation, and of course he leads the NAC. Shotgun on third and five. Creedon will be taken down for no gain as he tried to shuffle off right guard. And so you'd have to expect Don Beebe will be going for it here. Under 13 minutes left in the first. No score, and after the interception on the opening drive, this would be a huge boost of momentum for Concordia, Wisconsin to at least be able to level the field. Three receivers, make it four receivers. Trips to the right as Swanson's in the shotgun. More in motion, play action. Swanson takes it himself. He gets the first down on the second effort, and it'll be taken down shy of the 20. Aurora has been good on first down, up over 60% on the season to lead the league. And Aurora goes, I thought, into the red zone. They'll give him a gain of eight and the first down. Paul Ball, Jaron Onaveros, and Noah Serpa, the front three for CUW. Ben Kraft, Justice Canetta, Eli Wallace, and Brevin Palpalatak. The linebackers, Algerius Carey and Jakiri Moore at corner. Justin Cabrera and Bet Brett Dowler the safeties today for CUW. Five seniors, four juniors, a sophomore, and a freshman. That freshman is more at corner. Empty backfield here, Swanson from the shotgun, throwing it up the middle, complete. That is Cam Moore on his senior day, going for the pylon near side. He didn't get there, but it will be first and goal if it stands. There is a flag on the play. It's near the goal line, and I'd have to think that this is going to be first and very short here for the Spartans. I stand corrected. I thought I saw a flag on the play. I may have just seen the, out of the corner of my eye, the yellow shirt of the event staff here today. First down, Aurora from the Concordia 2. Here's Tavion Jeans in for his first minutes today after a career best day against Lakeland, his first career 100-yard rushing game. Wide receiver screen, Moore shakes a tackle at the five, stiff arm and in for the touchdown in the first points of the contest. Moore's fifth touchdown of the season, Josh Swanson's nation leading 39th touchdown pass and it's six to nothing Aurora, completing a six play drive with a short field. Swanson with the Wide receiver screen out to the far side, and it was an opportunity for CUW to end the play in the backfield. But it looked like Gio Nowatarski was not able to make the tackle. And it leads to six points. Matthew Hylix PAT is good, and it is seven to nothing Aurora. Not quite four minutes into the first quarter. This is Aurora University football. Couldn't ask for a better start for Aurora in this one. Seven to nothing. 
Cameron Moore, two-yard touchdown reception. Complete a six-play, 35-yard drive. Austin Wheelghost, senior from Shanahan, another touchback here as that one skips into the end zone. Falcons will have it on their own 25. And talking with Don Beebe earlier this week, he said with CUW, and he noted that they had played them the last couple of seasons on the road. Tough place to play up there. He said it's like playing a golf hole you can never par. He says that the Falcons don't make mistakes. You have to beat them. And that was a rare mistake a moment ago on the interception on their own end of the field. So Lynn and company will look to do better this time up the field on first down play action. Slant route complete, shy of the sticks. And that is Tim Houlihan, who is into the lineup here. And right away we'll have a gain of nine. Houlihan had been good. but had not appeared in the last handful of games for CUW. Comes in with, well, after that catch, now has a team leading 31 receptions for a bit over 400 yards. On second and one, they give it to Thomas. He doesn't get there. He goes right up the middle, and it wasn't happening. No gain. CUW will try it again here on third down. Not able to convert on their first. It ended up as an interception. Eight of 11 last week. Play action here. Lynn rolls right, dumps it off complete into the flat, and the lunge at the end of the play is enough. That was TJ Harold, the tight end. And another set of downs here for a CUW out to the 36. Gain of a couple. It was the stretch that did it. Under 10 minutes to play. First quarter, 7 to nothing. Aurora leading. Shotgun, two receivers near side. Two safeties high. A run option here for Lynn, who will take it himself out to the right side. Broke a tackle at the numbers. And then ends up well into his own bench. Flags come in afterwards. A couple of them, so we'll see if this ends up offsetting here. Was short of the first down. Oh my goodness. Tim Houlihan called for the late hit by the offense. And what had been a gain of eight. is going to be marked way back. It should be second down. Should mark them back here to about the 27. And in fact, that is where they will mark it off. So make it second and a lot here. Lynn rolls left, throws left, and overthrows Alejandro Vasquez, who took some contact from Ramirez after the play. A very costly penalty and a bit unusual. It's like another flag in here. Looks like there'll be a sideline warning here. Oh, not a sideline warning. No warnings anymore. That's the first one we've seen this year. And that'll be an automatic first down. As Concordia, Wisconsin goes back to where the James Lynn run had gotten to a moment ago. So the 15 minute or the 15 yard penalties end up offsetting plays later, essentially. 
So first and 10. Dumped off out to the right, that's Thomas to the sideline. Tiptoes it and we'll have a nice gain here nearing midfield. And they'll spot him the gain of five here out to the Falcons 47. Nine minutes remaining in first quarter here. Seven to nothing Spartans after they scored on their opening drive. Three and out on the first one for Concordia, Wisconsin. It was picked off, but their eighth play coming up. Albeit a very strange sequence to get to eight plays to this point. Three receivers and the shotgun here. Quick throw right to the sticks, complete to Campbell on the far side, first down. As the Falcons getting on schedule here, they advance into the Spartans end of the field here, and it will be out to the 48-yard line, 47-yard line, that is, in Spartan territory. So the Falcons driving down the field here. Offensive coordinator Curran White looking to get the visitors into the end zone here. Three receivers. It's Vasquez in motion. They fake the jet sweep. Then the throw is picked off up the middle again. Ernesto Ramirez takes it away for Aurora. And Ramirez has his fifth interception of the year. One off the nation's lead. 8-12 remains. And both Falcons' possessions so far here in the first quarter have ended with the INT. All right, Concordia, Wisconsin come in, nine interceptions, won a game, two already here, not even midway through the first quarter. Spartans take over at the 50, four receivers. Duncan becomes a tight end here for the play as Creedon gets the carry, shakes the tackle in the backfield, but that was enough as he'll be finished off. Paul Ball has had a terrific senior season for the Falcons, and while he didn't get the initial tackle for a loss, it's something he's been very good at, 12 on the year, just off the conference lead. He was able to disrupt the play enough that Creedon ends up losing three on the play. Rare loss of yardage for the senior from Bastrop, Texas. So it's a shotgun look for receivers to the right. They'll toss it out into the flat for Madsen. Breaks a tackle at the 50. There's a back across midfield before he'll be knocked down by Canetta. And that will be a gain of four to get back on the CUW side of the field. But not by a ton here. Third and nine, make that third and eight from the Falcons 48 yard line. See what Aurora goes with here. Looks like just one safety high for CUW here in part because the backfield is empty. Four receivers and a tight end. Swanson by himself in the shotgun. Quick throw left. Madsen dropped it at the 40. Palpatolic was there to deliver some punishment as Madsen was up in the air. And the Falcons will force the punt as Kevin Landa comes on. He's not very busy last week. Crystal Lake, Illinois, the alum of Crystal Lake South onto the field here. Final regular season game of his freshman season. Certainly hoping there will be another one for him next week, although Aurora would like to not be doing so much punting if that, in fact, does happen. Fair catch called for here by Nick Crowell. 6.43 left in the first. Fair catch called for at the 10. And so a long field coming up here for the Falcons. Spartan defense, by the way. Colt Tandy, Jalen Jordan, Jared Pratt, Otis Watts. The front four have been really good this season for Aurora. See what they dial up here as... James Lynn comes out in the shotgun. Four receivers, trips right. Lynn keeps it himself, takes it out to the near side. He'll be run out of bounds after a gain of about six or seven. Connor Nordmeyer there to run him out of bounds. He may even get a few more there. Make it eight on the play out to the 18. 
if nothing else, a little bit of breathing room for the Falcons as they get ready for a second and two. And two yards to go. Same formation. It's Jeffrey Mazur in the backfield getting the carry here. He'll have the first down and then along the hash marks, drags the pile forward out across Jeffrey the 25. So Mazur. Senior from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, averaging nearly seven yards per carry, one of the top five in the NAC. And right on cue, he picks up eight on his first touch. First down, Falcons under six to play in the first. Seven to nothing, the score. They'll keep trips out to the right. Lynn in the pistol. He'll drop back to throw, delivers it right, complete. That is Jason Leonard, the freshman from Tampa, making the catch. He'll be dragged down shy of the 35. But eight more for the Falcons here. All kinds of time for Lynn right there. This is a Falcons team that leads the NAC. They've allowed only eight sacks all year. Top 20 in the nation. Same for tackles for a loss allowed. Averaging about four allowed per game. That's very good also a top 20 mark in the nation. You've seen it on display here, so strength versus strength. Aurora showing blitz here. Oh, rush five, Lynn keeps it himself. Ran past the contain, turns up field. First down and more, gives himself up shy of midfield. Be a gain of 13 for Lynn and the chains will move again. Lynn has started for a long while here for the Falcons. Fifth year senior, able to do a lot of good things for CUW and saw that on display there, just ran right by the extra rusher for the Spartans. Four receivers again, Spartans with a couple safeties high here as Lynn, shoulder fake to his left, rolls right, gets rid of it, it's tipped and picked off again! But it's fumbled as it was into the hands of Giancarlo Marjorejo. He ended up putting it on the turf. Falcons signaling that they have it back. And they do. So it is a change of possession. Marjorejo with his first interception and the third in as many drives for the Falcons, but then a rare Aurora lost fumble. Spartans have only lost five on the season. This is the first one by the defense. And the Falcons will have it at their own 47 yard line with a fresh set of downs. Three receivers and a tight end. In motion is Booker. Lynn did not give it to him and then got buried in the backfield. Cole Tandy. The alum of University High School in Normal. Loss of two on the play. Back to the 45. What was that about tackles for a loss? Falcons don't allow very many. They give up one here, and they'll look at second and a dozen. Slot receiver on the near side here as Lynn calls out signals from the shotgun. Aurora will rush four. Lynn gets good protection. This one is tipped, intended for T.J. Harold at the numbers. And that was excellent coverage by Connor Nordmeyer. Got the hand in there. Nordmeyer from nearby Lindenhurst, Illinois. Five interceptions and now three passes, additional passes defended, I should say, on the year. Setting up third and a dozen in the Falcons 45. Three and a half minutes to play in the first. Seven to nothing Spartans. CUW one for two on third down. Lynn against the blitz. Throws to the sideline out of the reach of Houlihan. And the Falcons will have to punt. Now Mason Kaczynski has been very good 
for the Falcons in his career. This season is average of nearly 39 yards, second best in the conference. And the Falcons in general lead the knack in punt return defense. Hardly giving up any yards allowed, but needing to deal with James Maltino, one of the only six players in the country with multiple punt return touchdowns this year. This is an end over end kick. It's high in the air. Maltino will call fair catch and haul it in at his own 26. So we'll call it progress for the Falcons. Four drives, the first one that doesn't end in an interception. But they still kick it away and earn no points. 322 left. Quarter number one, seven to nothing. Spartans in front. Aurora set for their third drive. Touchdown on a short field, three and out. And to be determined here as Swanson gets the ball in the pistol. He'll give it to Creedon, and he is taken down in the backfield. Creedon, the ball carrier. Like Noah Serpa, as well as Ben Kraft in there. Flag on the play right at the line of scrimmage. Doesn't seem particularly promising for Aurora. Here's referee Jeremy Mancilla. Oh, I lied. Personal foul here. It's like a face mask was called there, and despite the loss of yardage, and it was significant. It'll end up being a new set of downs and a first and 10 from the Spartans 41. Shotgun here. Creedon motions out of the backfield and then gets the pass in the flat. Nearly slipped, stayed up, bounces it outside. A stiff arm, but run out of bounds. As Gia Nowatarski in on the tackle there. Noah Tarski from Reading, Pennsylvania, an alum of Exeter High School, home of the Eagles. And I did not have to look that up, folks. Having grown up in nearby Boyertown, I remember playing youth football in Exeter once upon a time. In any case, he's there on the tackle. Pistol here for receivers. Dylan Lyman from Oregon. You know, I don't get to talk about my hometown very often in the East Coast. I look for every opportunity I can. Here's the handoff for Creedon. He'll have the first down up the middle and off free on the numbers. He'll drag some players down inside the Spartans 30. First down Aurora. Gain of at least 25. Make it exactly 25 as they put it on the Falcons 30. 208 left first quarter, seven to nothing. Aurora leading and looking to threaten for more. Swanson in the pistol here. Lots of space up the middle of the field here. Swanson play action. Now throws to the middle and overthrew Cam Moore. Swanson's pass is thrown incomplete intended for Cam Moore. So clearly Swanson seeing the same thing we did up here. Wasn't able to deliver the football on the money. A minute 51 to play in this opening quarter. Seven to nothing Spartans, second and 10 coming up. Four receivers, the look for the Spartans coming up here. Swanson in the shotgun with Creedon. Swanson looks right, throws right, that's complete. Michael Bolin, shy of the 20, third and short coming up. Gain of eight. And folks, I'll, I'll tell you this, perhaps if you're a Concordia, Wisconsin fan watching this and, and you don't know, if Aurora doesn't get it here, I personally guarantee Don Beebe is going for it on fourth down on this end of the field. Did not see him kick it from here yet. Play action, pass complete into the flat, Cam Moore, he'll get the first down and take that fourth down conversion out of play. And after failing to convert in their first two third down attempts, Aurora is able to make it happen here and move the Spartans into the red zone for the second time. Aurora, 40 red zone touchdowns in 49 tries. 
here inside the 20 for the 50th time. You don't have to go back very far. 2019, Aurora led the country in red zone offense. Struggled a bit against Benedictine and St. Norbert specifically. Swanson steps up into the pocket, now flushed out here. He will throw it to the sideline and somehow find Michael Boland, who came back to the play, made the catch, and got the first down out the six. It's a gain of 13. A scramble drill that time, won by the Spartans. And as we get into the final 30 seconds of the first quarter, we'll see if Aurora will run another play here or wait for the wind to shift. They don't have to call one. They do have the wind with them here, so I think they'd want to get one more playoff here. We'll see if they get the look that they want. Four receivers, four seconds left on the clock. Swanson takes the mouthpiece out to change the play, and that, in fact, will do it for the first quarter. 7-0 Aurora leading here. And a first and goal coming up. This is Aurora University football. Take a look around the knack right now. They are at halftime. St. Norbert leading Concordia Chicago 23 to nothing. Benedictine has a 7 to nothing lead over Wisconsin Lutheran midway through the first. And Rockford trying to get on the board here this season with a win. Tied at, at Lakeland 7 to 7. Lots going on for Aurora today. Mentioned the AU men's soccer team, the NCAA tournament. Unfortunately, their season has now come to an end. At Gustavus Adolphus, the hosts, they fall 2-0. Jalen Deppenbrock made six saves in the loss for Aurora. There's home hockey today. AU women, ho or rather, AU women are at Finlandia. The AU men are home to Finlandia today. Cross country regionals, wrestling, women's basketball today, you name it. We've got it for AU. Shotgun here on first and goal for Aurora to begin the second quarter. Swanson rolls right in trouble and throws it out of the back of the end zone. I wasn't overthrown as much as I would have expected. It looked like Ty Pruitt might actually have had a chance at that in the back of the end zone. It's a bit out of his reach, and it'll be second and goal from the six coming up here. Sean Fry with you. Dylan Lyman helping out on the camera. Now, Dylan, this is March men's lacrosse weather. Am I right? And fall football weather. Took us to the season finale to get a nice cold day. Three receivers, more in motion to the far side. Swanson from the shotgun throws the slant left. Flag comes in. In fact, three flags come in. Everyone thought that was pass interference. That'll be half the... Well, actually, I shouldn't say half the distance, but I think that'll effectively be what it is here. It's the only thing would be if they call defensive holding instead, but it is pass interference. So they'll move the football to the two. To first and goal, and six feet to get here for Aurora, leading seven to nothing in the opening seconds of the second quarter. Pistol here, Creedon behind Swanson. Gets the football. Did he get in? It's close, second effort, he did. Touchdown, Spartans. 12th touchdown of the season for Creedon to extend his conference lead. And it's 13 to nothing, Aurora. Nine play, 74 yard drive for the Spartans. 
Creedon after three scores last week adds another here early in the second quarter. Here's Matthew Heilick. 61st extra point attempt for him this season. I'll give you some context how many touchdowns Aurora has scored. This one's up and good. It's 14 to nothing. 15 seconds into the second quarter. Spartans leading. This is Aurora University football. Nothing Aurora. Spartans set to kick it away after Jaquay Creedon took it in for six. Wheelghost's kick. He fielded here at the 11 yard line. That is Ashar Thomas. Be taken down shy of the 25 here as he took it across the field out toward the far numbers. Falcons will have it on the 24. Now Don Beebe told me that games like this usually come down to turnovers. He said, we can't do it, can't have it. Well, right now, the Aurora turnover margin is plus two. And even that only because an interception for the Spartans was fumbled right back to them. So the Aurora turnover margin, plus 18 on the year in the top 10 in the country. First down here, rolling right Lynn in trouble, throws it deep and Campbell Jr. got open down the field. He was wide open near the Spartans 40 yard line. He'll be dragged down at the Aurora 32. Zaya McHale Smith in on the stop for the Spartans. All the way into Concordia territory. A gain of 44 on the play and easily the longest play from scrimmage in this one. Falcons get right back up to the line, trying to seize the initiative here down 14 to nothing early in the second. Lynn with Mazer next to him. Three receiver look here for the Falcons. Mazer gets the carry. He slipped, kept on going, and then fumbles the football. Aurora has it, but I wasn't sure if he was down by contact or not. The referees say he wasn't, and Ernesto Ramirez has the fumble recovery. Now the officials are going to discuss, and they will keep it Aurora football. Fourth turnover in this game for the Falcons. Well, Concordia, Wisconsin making a ton of mistakes here. They had lost only five fumbles all year coming into this one. They had fumbled only five times <laughs> this year. Lost them all. Now they're six for six. So on first down here, handoff Creedon. Lots of room to run. Up the hash mark, he has the first down. And then tossed down after a gain of 16. Public address announcer, Dr. Sean Neitzel, getting the crowd involved here. Another Aurora first down. 14 0 Aurora, 13 35 left in the first half. Aurora has outgained Concordia, Wisconsin narrowly, 118 112. It has not mattered as the Falcons keep giving away the football. Four receivers, Swanson in the pistol with Creed in here. Two receivers stacked on the far side. Creedon gets the football up the middle. The It'll be there. taken down after a gain of a couple. Down at the 45 yard line. 
Nyquist in on the stop for Concordia. Gain of two on the play, second down. Second down Eagles. coming up here for the Falcons. Not really been able to get a ton of pressure on Josh Swanson, who was 7 of 11 throwing the football. Bad snap. It's on the ground. Swanson evades a runner and then almost <laughs> delivered the football for the first down. So after the snap was put on the turf, looked like Zach Ballard was primed to make the play. Swanson stepped around him and just underthrew it. Setting up third and eight. This is a very big down for the Falcons defense. They've allowed 40% of third down attempts to be converted seventh of nine in the knack. Need to get off the field here. They blitz. Swanson delivers the football to the left out of the reach of Pruitt. And that is what the Falcons needed. Aurora, 16-yard gain on their first play of this sequence. Then three and out from there. And we'll see Kevin Landa again here. Again, one the Falcons sorely needed. Now have to find a way to get up field and get one in for six. Let's see what Landa can do here. He'll have a wind into his face. This one gets away, end over end, and... Crowell will get away from that. Big Aurora bounce inside the 20 all the way down to the 10. And in fact, a little bit of waving there from Dylan Regnier Jamnik. Trying to provide a little manual wind that time with his hands. I don't blame him. The crowd certainly enjoyed it. Falcons will take over on their 10-yard line. 20 plays for the Falcons. Four of them have been given back to the Spartans. That is not a good percentage, turning it over on 20% of your plays. 12-19 left, first half, 14 to nothing, Aurora. Lynn in the shotgun, goes to the jet sweep here. He kept it himself, took a large hit at the line of scrimmage as Cole Tandy absolutely leveled the Falcons quarterback. No gain. Sold me on the jet sweep. Did not sell Cole Tandy and Lynn took some punishment as a result. Shotgun here on second and 10. Three receivers tight end. One safety high, Aurora showing blitz as Marjorejo steps up. He'll get after it. All kinds of laundry here. I'm going to guess this is five more for the Aurora defense. And there it is, false start here. Second and 15 from the five coming up here. Not where you want to be as your Falcons head coach, Greg Etter. 2013 NAC champion and coach of the year. The Falcons have been runner up five times during his tenure, in danger of having it happen a sixth time here if I don't get some points here before too long. Lynn throws it up the middle and overthrew Campbell here on second down. That was a dangerous pass. There were a lot of Spartans in the vicinity there and only a Mesmer Catholic alum for the visitors here today. Third and 15. Falcons will have Thomas alongside Lynn in the shotgun. Two receivers on the near side of the formation, one out on the far side. Spartans will have two safeties high and drop back into coverage. Lynn throws it into the flat for Harold, breaks two tackles, and then will be taken down from behind, shy of the first down. Good pursuit there by who else but Marcellus Ramias, who has been doing that all year. Ends up being a gain of 13 but only advances to the 18, and it certainly appears that Concordia, Wisconsin was considering going for it here 
but just too risky where they are on the field. And especially considering Falcons defense has, all things considered, done a pretty nice job today. Gave up a touchdown on a short field. And have bailed out some Falcons turnovers in this one. So here's Kaczynski set to punt that away. But a delay of game here. And that all brought on because of the weight to decide on whether to punt it or to go for it. And maybe you think that doesn't matter. And I think in the middle of the field, you might be right. But where they're at, five yards is meaningful. So Kaczynski has to give this one the boot, and he does. Maltino fields it at his own 46. And doesn't have a lot of blockers here, but makes something happen. There's a flag on the play as Maltino takes it down inside the Falcons 35. Once again, pretty much the entire officiating crew saw a block in the back here. And that's going to negate what otherwise had been a very nice return by Maltino, despite the fact that the closest five people to him at one point were wearing white uniforms. So there's the block in the back. I think this will put Aurora in all probability back to their own 40 here, considering where the flags are. And in fact, that is where they put the football. 10-13 to play before halftime. Aurora leading 14 to nothing on a brisk fall day here in Montgomery. And the NAC automatic qualifier hanging in the balance. Spartans trying to win the NAC outright. Creedon motions out to the near side. Shotgun, four receivers total. Now make it four receivers and a tight end. Swanson will throw it here. Has time, delivers it along the hash marks to Madsen in Falcons territory. First down. Taken down at the 36, a gain of 24. Oh, Madsen has been terrific. That is his 50th catch of the season. Up over 700 yards receiving on the year for him to lead the Spartans. First and 10. Aurora now with nine first downs. They average 25 per game. That's in the top 20 in the country. Don Beebe knows how to move the football. Pistol, three receivers. Creedon gets the handoff, bounces it outside, and will be swallowed up after a gain of a yard to the 35. Kraft, Ball, Serpa, among others. And on the tackle. Again, for a Concordia, Wisconsin team that, again, really around the middle of the conference statistically in just about everything, but maybe not telling the full story, obviously not telling the full story for an eight and one team. Four receivers make it five, four to the left. Throw complete, more at the 20, all kinds of room. He takes it in for the touchdown. 20 to nothing, Aurora. 35 yards, Swanson to Moore. The inside slant, Moore caught it at the hash marks and no one could find him. His second touchdown of the day, sixth of the season. And this one in danger of getting away from the Falcons. I look for the extra point. Michael Boland, the holder, the kick is up and good. 21 0 Aurora in front. 8.47 left before halftime. This is Aurora University football.
foul, the story of the game, turnovers. Ball falls off the tee here. 21-0 Aurora leading 8.47 to play before the second quarter. Three interceptions and a lost fumble for Concordia, Wisconsin. Minus three for the turnover margin today. We'll go set to kick this away. And even with a relatively average field last time, Aurora able to get the offense in gear. Here's Asher Thomas. Flag comes in. He breaks the tackle and bounces it outside. Long return here. I don't know that it's going to count as Thomas goes out of bounds near midfield out on the far side. But once again, flags everywhere here, and I'm not sure that Concordia, Wisconsin, is planning on having the ball at midfield. Waiting on the call from referee Jeremy Mancilla. Like holding here. We got Colin Rarsich for the hold. And that'll put the Falcons back on their own 16. Falcons offense has not been bad, averaging nearly five and a half yards per play. They've been only modestly outgamed here, 170 to 125 on a nearly equal number of plays. But you just cannot have four turnovers in the opening 18 minutes of the game. First down here, Thomas gets the handoff, bounces it outside, cuts back towards the middle and will be tripped up. Bauer in on the tackle for Aurora. Junior from Scottsdale, Arizona. Able to stop that play for a gain of a couple. Mauer and Ramias have been a formidable linebacker duo. And then Kaysen Burris, six tackles and a pick last week, has been very good as well. Shotgun, three receiver look for the Falcons. Harold in motion to the far side. Aurora rushes four. Lynn throws it up far sideline and over through his intended receiver, Vasquez. Lynn now seven for 14, throwing for 85 yards. Now thrown for over 6,700 yards for his career. Trying to find some rhythm here. Four receivers, trips left. Aurora will have a couple of safeties high here as Lynn takes the snap, looks left, has all day, throws it, completes it to Ginterberg on the far sideline for the first down to the 29, gain of 11. CUW now two for five on third down. Ginterberg from Appleton, Wisconsin. Now has nine catches on the season. Did not appear in his first three seasons. Thrust into the starting lineup here as a senior and contributing for the Falcons. And movement all over the place here before the snap. Another false start here as Concordia, Wisconsin has absolutely been a mess in this football game. In addition to the four turnovers, that's now seven penalties for 55 yards, and we're barely midway through the second quarter. Needless to say, this is not what Don Beebe was expecting for a team, again, as he mentioned, just doesn't beat itself. That has not been the case today. Lynn here with Thomas in the shotgun. Lynn throws left, completes it to Houlihan. He'll skip out of bounds at the 31. That'll get some of the yardage back and at least put the Falcons between the sticks here for a second down. Falcons get back to the line here. Lynn once again looking in the pistol. 
three receivers. Handoff is for Mazur, who takes it up the middle along the hash marks, and not much happening there for him either. Like Isaiah Perrin in there for the tackle. Maybe Steven Tinsley as well. Short gain. Third and five, though, all the same. Considering the false start penalty, the Falcons have done well to give themselves a third and medium. Three receivers. 21-0, 6 10 left in the second quarter. Lynn looks right, throws it high to the near side, jump ball, and that one is won by the Spartans. Zaya Smith, the freshman who has not looked at all like a freshman for Aurora this year, will force the punt. Well, Zaya Smith thrust into the starting lineup around mid-season from Live Oak, Texas, and from Antonian Prep High School. And has he been good or what for Aurora this year? Kashinsky with the punt will hop at the 33 and then back a couple of feet here in Concordia, Wisconsin's favor. It'll be down to the Spartan 31-yard line with 5.51 remaining before halftime. Well, I feel like a broken record here. This is an enormous possession for the CUW defense. 28-0 at halftime might be asking too much against an Aurora defense that really, when you look at it, has really only played one half of lackluster football. Really, the second half against Hope the only time when Aurora has not been able to answer the bell defensively. Four receivers here for Swanson with Creedon behind him in the pistol. Play action. Swanson throws it up the middle, complete to Moore at midfield. Another first down for Aurora. Moore breaks the tackle and is down inside the Concordia, Wisconsin, 40. 30 yards for Moore, who now has five receptions for 90. Had four 100-yard receiving games last season, including three straight at one point. And looking to add another to his career totals here. First and 10 from the Falcons, 39. Same formation. Let's see if Jaquay gets the football this time from Swanson. He does not. Wide receiver screen the more. Why not? Having a big game. Stiff arm at the 35 and then repelled backwards. He fumbles, but after the whistle blows. Brevin Palpalatak, among others, in on the tackle. It'll be a gain of four. Well, on senior day, you want to certainly have a good effort and Cam Moore's had a lot of terrific performances over the years. Just adding another to a fine career. Empty backfield for Aurora on second and six. Moore is alone on the near side, four out on the right side of the formation. One safety high. Swanson once more deep down the left sideline, goes back to the football and dropped it. And it looked like Brett Dowler, if he had not been face guarding Moore, might have been different. I'm not sure that Moore got a great look at the football there. It hit him in the numbers and went straight to the turf. Get the sense, though, that Josh Swanson has found a particularly hot connection here with Moore as he's gone back to him over and over again in this game. Four receivers, two by two for Swanson on third and six. This time, Near sideline, that's Ty Pruitt for the first down. Inside the 25. Don Beebe very excited about Ty Pruitt. Specifically mentioned some of the catches he made last week in the wind against Lakeland were superb. This is a gain of 10. Ball down to the 24 in Falcons territory with four minutes to play before halftime. 21-0 Aurora. Here is.
is. Swanson from the pistol into the late handoff. Creedon room the run to the 15. A shoestring slowdown there. Might have kept Creedon from finding his way all the way in. Instead, he'll be taken down shy of the 10, but it will be another first down. They will spot the football at the 12. 12 more for Jaquay, who has 60 yards on 10 carries. And Aurora threatening once again in the red zone. Where they are two for two today. Swanson steps up into the pocket, now rolls out to his right. He will throw it up and out of the end zone. A smart decision by the senior quarterback. Interesting comment in my conversation with Coach Beebe earlier this week. He thought that the Lakeland game was the best game Josh Swanson has had since he's been here, and I would tend to agree. 254 yards and four touchdowns in that win was truly something composed, made great decisions with the football. Four receivers here for Aurora on second and ten. Trips right. Swanson looks left, throws it up the middle and over through Montino. Found his way around on a wheel round. Third, down and ten. Third and ten. Aurora has not kicked, or I guess I should say, has not converted a field goal attempt in the red zone. They've only attempted one this season. It's rare. All 41 red zone scores are touchdowns. Five receivers, trips right, Swanson throws up the middle on the slant route, touchdown, as Ty Pruitt makes it 27 to nothing. Had his first 100-yard receiving game last week. Had a couple of touchdowns. And adds another one here today as Aurora goes up four scores before the intermission. Here is Heilick, the junior out of Hobart, Indiana, for the fourth time today. Kick is up and good. 28-0 Aurora, 3.03 to play before halftime. This is Aurora University football. And all Aurora so far. I think we're finally starting to see the Concordia Wisconsin defense perhaps succumb to a bit of the pressure that's been put upon them. Back to back drives with touchdowns for Aurora to go up 28 to nothing. Here's a high kick fielded near the 20 by Ashard Thomas. Had a good return called back last time. Here he'll push it out near the 30. So another decent return for Thomas. Football down here at the Falcons 29 yard line. Midway through the second quarter, Lakeland leads Rockford 28 to 14 as the Regents try to avoid a winless league slate this season. Benedictine and Concordia, Wisconsin tied at 14 midway through the second. And it looks like St. Norbert's going to end the season with a win. They're up 44 to nothing in the third quarter against Concordia Chicago. There's a jump ball in the first play on this drive, and a very late flag comes in 
as that pass was intended for Christian Booker. I think I'd like to see a second look at that. That looked like a jump ball in the triple coverage. And it looks like the penalty flag might end up bailing out a not particularly great decision. Now they are going to discuss this. Uh, I don't think that's a good call at all. Taking another look here, and I have the benefit of replay, but Zaya Smith was facing the football when he jumped for it. Uh, this should be picked up here. Uh, otherwise, it's a long penalty for excellent defense. 2.51 left here before halftime. It's 28 to nothing. This is a long conversation, and I have to give this officiating crew credit. Regardless of how they end up calling this, this is the right thing to do to discuss this and make sure that they make the best possible call. Oh, they're calling targeting. Well, and I thought they were discussing pass interference. Well, I've, I've got to say that I don't see that either. But Ernesto Ramirez, as a result of the targeting, is out of the game. That is an extraordinarily impactful call, and I am not certain that I saw the same thing they did. And I'll move the football up to the 44-yard line. You can hear the murmuring in the crowd, and I am not sure that I blame them here. First and 10, here's Lynn looking left, throwing left, and off the mark there out of bounds. Lynn's pass is incomplete. I think the only thing you can say is that the, the video obviously is imperfect. We have one angle. May have been a better angle down there on the field, but I am not sure that I saw it. Second and ten. Three receivers here for the Falcons. Handoff for Thomas looking to bounce it outside. He'll be taken down along the numbers after a gain of a couple. Third and eight coming up here with 2.35 to play before halftime. It's 28 to nothing. Fans, as usual, will have the Aurora University cheer and dance squad performing at halftime. It's their senior day as well. So stick around for that. The struggle has been real for the Falcons on third down today. One for five. Well, they may be in four down territory at this point in the football game. We'll see if they don't convert. Three receivers. Lynn is in trouble. Rolls to his right. And he'll be dragged down as he threw the football. And that's Cole Tandy. I'm going to talk about a team here that loves the success each other is having. Official describing that there was not intentional grounding there, and I think that's the right call as well. And I will admit I am perhaps a bit surprised here. I say perhaps. Down 28 to nothing, but with fourth and long, I don't know that there's a good decision here. It's a minute 53 left. I have to try to give Aurora the longest field possible here. I think that's the thinking as Kaczynski's punt gets away. Line drive down the far sideline and out of bounds inside the 20. Might be barely inside the 20. A minute 47 left. They will spot the football right at the 20.
This is plenty of time for a Don BB offense to advance 80 yards. All the objective has to be for the Falcons defense, keep the Spartans off the board. It is always, it especially is the case here. Here's Creedon on the screen on first down. He's into space, first down, and taken down at the 33. Gain of 13. The clock will stop at every first down to spot the football. But Aurora is going to call a timeout here. They're first. They have two remaining. Again, folks, I mentioned it is a busy day of Aurora University events. Men's and women's cross country in action at the Midwest Regional Championships, NCAA Division III. Which is not happening so far away, by the way, folks, just up in Geneva. So the women and men have both competed at this point. And the AU men's soccer team lost in the first round of the NCAA tournament at Gustavus Adolphus 2-0. Women's hockey at Finlandia. Men's hockey home to Finlandia later today. And then AU women's basketball looks to make it a 3-0 start against a very good Webster team. Last night, AU men's basketball went to Eureka and lost a close one, 79-73. Pass is in Incomplete the pass here out to the far sideline on first and ten. Swanson ten. now 14 of, I'll make that 15 of 25 for 197 yards. Minute 35 remaining before halftime, second and ten from the Spartan 33. 28 nothing Aurora. Swanson in the pistol. Delayed handoff, Creedon, he hits the hole with speed. Bounces it outside to the near side to the 40, 45, 50. First down and out of bounds across the Falcons 45. Be a gain of 22 and 23 as they'll give him the extra yard to the 44, but there is a flag on the play. And Aurora's walking backward. And I'm going to suspect this one is going to go for holding here. <laughs> on sportsman like conduct is called here on Matt Kickle. Let's see if we can assess what might have happened here. Said it was during the play. Second down and 25 yards to go now. And I wonder if maybe they thought there was an attempt to trip there. I'm not sure, but on second and 25, One pass complete pass. to the near sideline. Just shy of the Aurora 35. That'll get them back between the sticks. It'll be third and 10 here. A minute 11 remaining. Huge third down here for the Falcons. Finally a third and long here for Aurora. Swanson rolls to his left. Throws it down the sideline, caught by Boland and inbounds. This is where Creed Creedon would have ended up roughly, and Aurora gets there anyway. First down, Spartans. As they move into CUW territory with a minute four remaining, that is Boland's fourth catch today and his longest. Now four receivers for the Spartans. And 64 seconds to work with. Creedon in the backfield. Swanson steps up into the pocket. Now has to run for it. Out to the right. He'll throw it up deep. That is going to be picked off by Noah Tarski as Swanson didn't get near enough on that. And that is going to be one 
Swanson will want back. Falcons will get a stop and will have 51 seconds to try to advance the football from their own 23. I do not believe Swanson got everything on that throw. That, that really is the only explanation, is that was thrown up, and the closest five players to the football were for Concordia, Wisconsin. So perhaps trying to do a bit too much there, and the Falcons will get one last opportunity here before halftime to get on the board. Five receivers. Lynn is in trouble and taken down. That is Cole Tandy again who has had a sensational game. Six and a half sacks now on the season. We'll have a timeout called here and it's going to be an injury timeout. a loss of eight on the play. And the trainers will come out here and tend to the injured Falcon. Now because of the injury timeout inside of a minute, we're going to run 10 seconds off the clock. So that will run the clock down to about 22 seconds. It's Drew Mickelson walking off here for the Falcons. Clock will start running again, and CUW, I would imagine, will just not snap the football. What a half for Aurora. Nearly 300 yards of offense, four scores, and in a game where the winner goes to the NCAA playoffs, Aurora has the lead at halftime, 28 to nothing over Concordia, Wisconsin. Stay tuned for Senior Day for the Aurora University Cheer and Dance Squad here at athletics.aurora.edu. It's time to introduce the 2022 Aurora University Cheer and Dance Squad. Led by Captains Olivia McCarter, Justine Pearson, Presley Borvin, and Catherine Fasking, as well as head coach Stephanie Yeldon. At this time, we will recognize the senior class for the Cheer and Dance Squad for 2022. Olivia McCarter is first. The cheer team captain, who is accompanied by her parents, Dennis and Lori. She's a double major in business administration and finance. She plans to complete her internship with State Farm and then accept a position as an insurance consultant with State Farm. Olivia McCarter. Next is Presley Borvan, the dance captain, accompanied by her parents, Laura and Richard. Presley is an elementary education major. She plans to change the lives of the younger generation as an elementary teacher. Presley Borvan. And Heather Wilkes, who was accompanied by her parents, Patricia and Brian. Heather is a therapeutic recreation major who plans to take and pass the certified therapeutic recreation specialist exam. Return to graduate school for sign language interpretation and one day work as an interpreter and CTRS. Heather Wilkes. So a round of applause here, well deserved for 
their hard work and dedication to AU and the cheer and dance program. Olivia McCarter, Presley Borvan, and Heather Wilkes, the cheer and dance seniors. <laughs>
halftime here. 28-0 Aurora in front with a half hour to go, potentially from the NCAA playoff automatic qualifier. Glad you're with us on this Saturday afternoon. My name is Sean Fry. Dylan Lyman back for the second half here on the camera. Real quick, congratulations to Dianera Colon Maldonado of the Aurora Women's Cross Country Team finished ninth today in the Division Three Midwest Regional Championships, and so she will advance to nationals. Congratulations, Dee Dee, advancing after the AU women's team and the men's team competed in regional play today. The AU men's wrestling team is at Milliken as we speak. Aurora University men's soccer lost today in the first round of the NCAA tournament at Gustavus Adolphus 2-0, but congratulations to Ryan Lakin and the Spartans on a terrific season. First time in the NCAA tournament since 2006 for the Spartan soccer players. AU women's hockey set to drop the puck at Finlandia here in less than a half hour. AU women's basketball will tip it off at Webster also at 3 o'clock and then over at Fox Valley Ice Arena in Geneva, AU Men's Hockey hosts Finlandia uh, getting underway at the top of the hour. Around the knack, it is all St. Norbert leading Concordia Chicago in the fourth quarter, 54 to nothing. Wisconsin Lutheran leads Benedictine in Lyle, 28 to 21, nearing halftime there. And it's Lakeland hammering Rockford at the break, 42 to 14. Spartans won the toss and deferred, so they will receive the second half kickoff here. And it appears that Aurora will, well, I guess it's a little bit too early to say which direction they're going to take the football. But Concordia, Wisconsin huddling as a team at their 25 yard line and trying to find a little bit of resistance here. They need a large rally here to advance to the NCAA tournament grabbing a share of the NAC title. Meanwhile, Aurora just 30 minutes away from the outright NAC title for the third fall in a row and fourth time in a row overall. In that first half, Aurora outgained Concordia, Wisconsin 293 to 142. That included 70 to 37 on the ground and 223 to 105 in the air. Jaquay Creedon has rushed for 62 yards for the Spartans. Josh Swanson, three touchdown passes to go along with that 223 through the air. And how about the game that Cam Moore is having on his senior day? Six catches, 94 yards, and a couple of touchdowns. Aurora's been good on third down. Concordia, Wisconsin has not. Spartans four for seven. Concordia, Wisconsin one for six. And don't get me started on turnovers here. Concordia, Wisconsin, four turnovers in the first 18 minutes of the game. Aurora has a couple, an interception and a fumble. So it hasn't been all crisp for the Spartans, but certainly sharp enough as they lead it 28 to nothing. Aurora moving right to left here in the third quarter. White helmets, black uniform tops and pants. Concordia, Wisconsin and all white going left to right. So we'll see Zach Heinen kick it away here for the Falcons. And it's an onside kick attempt that doesn't have enough. And a complete disaster to begin the third quarter. Aurora is going to have terrific field position at the 43 in Falcons territory. Well, you can understand the theory behind it, but Hayden did not get near enough on that. I think the officials are generously putting that on the 44. I don't think it even got that far. So this is where Aurora will start with the football as they try to begin hammering in some nails in the proverbial CUW coffin here. A four touchdown lead and trying to leave no doubt here. Four receivers, Swanson in the shotgun, trips to the left, one safety high for the Falcons as we begin the third quarter. Creedon gets the football and will try to shuffle his way across the line of scrimmage and does well to get three yards out to the 41. Hard yardage for Jaquay against the front four that I would say is generally done a decent job today for the Falcons. 
Aurora has had to move the football mostly through the air. And a bit of a change from the last handful of weeks. Four receivers two by two for Swanson in the shotgun. Who steps up into the pocket, throws it deep near side. Caught Trey Madsen inside the 20. First down Aurora as this one will be advanced to the Concordia 18 yard line. Game of 23. Three catches for Madsen. He's up over 50 yards on the day. 51 on the season. The senior from right here in Montgomery and the alum of Aurora Christian High School. Madsen in the pistol here. Stand corrected. Swanson in the pistol here. Four receivers. Trips it a bunch to the right. Play action. Swanson, he throws it deep up the middle. Caught for Madsen. Touchdown. Three plays, a minute and 10 seconds, and six more for Aurora. Trey Madsen's 15th touchdown catch of the season, a top five mark in the nation. And the comeback is getting even more difficult here for the Falcons. An absolute Brilliant throw by Josh Swanson for his fourth touchdown pass of the day. Heilig for the extra point. That's good, and it's 35 0 seconds into the third quarter. This is Aurora University football. leading 35 to nothing. It has been a long time since the Aurora defense has allowed a touchdown. Shut out last week, nothing allowed in the first half so far, nothing allowed in the fourth quarter against Benedict, and you have to go back to the first quarter against the Eagles the last time the Spartans allowed a touchdown. Good return here for Ashar Thomas, though, who finds his way out across the 30 along the hash marks. And it'll be good field position for the Falcons, relatively speaking, just shy of the 35-yard line. Last touchdown allowed by Aurora was with 10.09 to play in the first quarter against Benedictine two weeks ago. And they allowed a field goal to end the half and then a field goal with 9-11 remaining in the third quarter, and that's the last time anyone has scored on Aurora, touchdown or otherwise. The defense has been sensational. Jeffrey Mazur on first down goes off tackle right side, and it will be Jeffrey close Mazur to the first down. down. Falcons starting on their own 34, and he takes this out to the 43 before being dragged down near the numbers. Giancarlo Marjorejo in on the tackle that time. Second and one coming up here. 35-0, the Aurora advantage here early in the third. Have to believe that CUW will need to hurry it up from here. Three receivers slot far side. Lynn looks left. And somehow that was, you know, I thought hauled in, but the officials say incomplete, T.J. Harold. By the way, Ernesto Ramirez, who was very briefly disqualified for targeting and missed the final three or four minutes of the first half, after video review has been reinstated, and you can see him out around the 50-yard line. So a nice job by the officiating crew to go back and make the right call there. Obviously difficult in real time. But Ramirez is back. Targeting has been taken off the books. It'll be third and one here for CUW. Thomas gets the carry. He's in trouble, but he finds his way through traffic and into space. 45-40 in the Spartan territory, and that'll be the longest rush for CUW by far. 
One that the Falcons absolutely needed to have down to the Aurora 37. Otis Klotz in on the stop for That'll be a gain of 20. Mel Thomas, a junior from Punta Gorda, Florida, after a buck 61 last week, has not found it near as easy to come by. But able to find his way forward for a new sequence of downs here for the Falcons. Lynn, low snap, now in trouble as he rolls out to the left from his back foot, fires to the sideline, incomplete. Nice effort by Jason Leonard, but not able to stay inbounds. Second and 10 coming up. Lynn, now on the day, 10 for 20. No touchdowns, three picks. Not how the fifth year senior, I'm sure, had it drawn up in his head. Aurora has made it very difficult for him today, but still another 12.30 in the third quarter and then 15 more in the fourth. Lynn here on second and 10, this time with good protection, delivers it to the near sideline for Campbell. He makes the catch and he'll have the first down by a yard or two here out to the 26. First downs here at well, this point, 18 to 11. Aurora averaging better than eight yards per play. Concordia, Wisconsin, right at around five here. First and 10 from the Spartan 26. Lynn, good pressure, or good protection again. Throws it up into the end zone. And once again, a nice play in coverage by Aurora. This time it's Ben Slatkoff. Slatkoff, the right now second in the knack with 12 passes defended. Make that 13 now. Five picks in the top five in the nation, and then now eight breakups as well. Ball was just hung up a little bit at times. It allowed Aurora to get facing the football and make some plays. Here on second and 10, Lynn rolls left, throws left, and over through the intended receiver, Ginterberg. Third down here. Well, I don't think there's any doubt that this is four down territory. So I'm certain Greg Etter and company know they don't need the full 10 here. 11.54 left in the third quarter. Aurora up 35 to nothing. This is as deep as Concordia, Wisconsin has been in this football game. Shotgun, four receivers, trips left. Spartans with one safety high, it's Ramirez. Spartans rush three, Lynn steps up, rolls to his right, and he's tripped up from behind. Now just another day at the office for Marcellus Ramius. I don't think there's any question that he's been the best player defensively in the NAC this season. And I hope that the voters will, will bear this out here at about a week's time. He has been unbelievable. We'll see if they'll credit that as a sack. If so, believe it or not, it would only be his second of the year, but he has nearly 14 tackles for a loss this year. So it sets up fourth and a dozen. Lynn. All day to throw, up the middle, picked off for the fourth time today. And that's Marjorejo for the second time. This time he hangs on to the football and Aurora will have it near midfield. Eleven oh three remaining. and a nation best 24 interceptions here for Aurora this season. They will spot the football at the Spartan 43 yard line. On first down here for Aurora. Swanson gives the ball to Creedon, takes it right side, turns up field, and he'll be run out of bounds. Not an enormous gain. I thought he might have gotten to the 50, but they'll spot the football out of bounds at the 47. Gain of four. Marjorejo came in, a transfer from Division I North Alabama. 
Did not have an interception this season through eight games played. Doubles up today. Madsen in motion, takes the ball in the jet sweep, turns upfield. He'll be near the line to gain. Run out of bounds at the Concordia 48-yard line. And so if my math is correct, that should be third and very short here. A yard to get. 10-20 and counting in a 35 to nothing football game. Well, you don't see this very often, folks. An Aurora offense with Swanson under center usually only means one thing, and it's the quarterback sneak up the middle for a gain of three and a first down. Swanson 6'2", 200, which is certainly preferred if you plan on taking it up the middle. Set of downs here for the Spartans, and they'll empty the backfield. Five receivers, four to the left. Falcons will drop two safety. Swanson is all day, throws it deep. Far sideline out of the reach of Cam Moore. Swanson's pass is incomplete. Intended for Cam Moore, second down and 10. I think it's worth noting, and you know, we've talked about the Aurora offensive line all year. But Paul Ball has the only quarterback hit in this one and no sacks from the defense that led the conference with 19 this season. Aurora was right behind them with 17. The Spartan offensive line has won that battle today. Second and 10 from the Falcons 45. Swanson throws it up the middle, complete to Madsen at the hash marks inside the 30, down inside the 25. Another first down for Aurora. Gain of 22, and the Spartan offense piling up the yardage now. I feel like Aurora may be a score away from effectively ending this one. The resistance is Seeming to become less and less here as Aurora is picking apart the CUW defense. Here they'll get some pressure on Swanson who rolls right and completes. Ooh, no, he does not complete it to the sticks. A rare drop by this Aurora receiving crew as Boland going to a knee trying to stay in and complete the catch and wasn't able to do it. Is a final. St. Norbert concludes its season with an exclamation point, 54 to nothing over Concordia Chicago. So the Green Knights end the year at seven and three overall, six and two in the NAC. Concordia Chicago six and seven overall, two and six in league play. Second and ten here. Swanson will be in the pistol with four receivers, and with the play clock running down, a flag comes in. Spartans will get the time off time out here. Well, battle of teams in Lyle that are both at four and three in league play. Wisconsin Lutheran leads Benedictine 28 to 21 at the break. And Wisconsin Lutheran frankly had a very difficult 2021 and has bounced back nicely for four wins and right now a touchdown up as they try to get to 500 on the season would decide the outright fourth place in the league and then it's not looking like Rockford is going to get that knack victory this season after all they trail Lakeland 42 to 14 at halftime it's still a half hour to rally in that one 35 to nothing here 846 left in the third not a lot of sunshine today it's been cloudy it has looked like winter it's felt like winter 33 at kickoff today but the Spartan offense has been on fire and off up the middle Creedon will be tripped up across the 20 Creedon, the ball carrier. four for him third and six coming up 
just inside the 20 of the 19 yard line. Jaquay, incredibly, has rushed for over 100 yards in seven of nine games so far, and he's approaching 75 yards on the day. Became the ninth Spartan to reach 1,000 yards in a single season, just the 10th time ever in program history. He'll get the screen here, get the first down, makes one player miss, makes a second player miss, and gets in for the touchdown on the screen. Oh, a terrific individual effort by Jaquay Creedon. And I'm not sure it's going to count. There's a flag hiding down there somewhere. Ineligible receiver downfield on Aurora. Take it off the board. Unfortunate. Is worth noting here, Jaquay Creedon, though, is closing in on 2,000 yards for his career. At this exact moment, he's at 1,987. Have not been a lot of 2,000 yard backs in Spartan history either. But a chance to get there as well. It'll be third now and 11. And the Falcons 24, 8.04 left, 35 nothing here in the third quarter. All Aurora, four receivers. Here's Swanson, steps up into the pocket, throws it deep. Madsen gets a hand on it, uh, cannot hang on. And that will bring up fourth down. Well, Aurora's been very good on fourth down this season, converted on their only attempt on fourth down today, and that was their very first set of downs in this game. And on the season, 17 of 28, better than 60%, top 50 mark in the country. There's a pistol look for Swanson with four receivers on fourth and 11. He gets a block from Creed and rolls out right, running out of space. Flag comes in as I believe Michael Bolin makes the catch. I don't know if he stayed in bounds or not. It would have been very close to the first down. Flag is upfield a bit here, so we'll wait for the call. Looks like he was short. Another, oh, it was an incomplete pass after all, so it'll be a turnover on downs. I'll decline the ineligible player downfield penalty. And the Falcons remain down 35-nothing nearing the midway point of the third quarter. See if the Falcons can find their way upfield. Have not been in the red zone today. They got inside the Spartan 30 last time down the field and threw an interception. Here's Ashar Thomas. He gets hit by Mar Marcellus Ramius. He tried to shift the field down the line of scrimmage. It's like no gain. Ramius, four tackles today. A couple of solo efforts as well. Falcons quickly back to the line here. Lynn, play action, rolling right. He's about to be in some trouble. Does get rid of the football, but Booker couldn't hang on. Well, I was personally worried for James Lynn that time as Jalen Jordan was in hot pursuit. Lynn did get rid of the football before absorbing some punishment there. Third and, as it turns out, 11, as it looks like Thomas lost a yard on that first play of the drive. It'll be a three-receiver look, slot and tight end on the near side. Aurora showing blitz. They'll rush forward. The screen out for Thomas. He'll get to the sideline near the 30, but he won't quite get there. Well, I don't know what to do if you're Greg Etter. Looks like they're going to punt here. You 
there's not a good decision at, at this point in the football game. They're relying on the defense to try to keep what is increasingly looking like a miracle, at least in play. It has been a busy day for Mason Kaczynski, who is going to punt for the fifth time here. Line drive kick. Montino will get it on a line at the 37, and he'll have some room to operate. Broken tackle at midfield, second broken tackle, and finally will be taken down. And it looks like Dalton Larden Noyes, a bit slow to get up there, pops up, and Aurora will retake possession here. 6.32 left in the third. They'll be in the Falcons' end of the field here at their own 47. Coming up on 3 o'clock here, puck drop for AU men's and women's hockey on the way here. AU women's hockey is in the Michigan Upper Peninsula today, taking on Finlandia, and then Finlandia down here for men's hockey. First play, quick out for Creedon out of the backfield. He'll be run out of bounds at the 40 after a gain of seven. Of course, sunset these days is about two hours from now, and there hasn't been any sunshine to be found, so it's actually starting to get rather dark out there. And the lights indeed have been on for much of this one here at Spartan Athletic Park. We'll actually walk back Creedon to about the 42-yard line. Gain of five. Max protect here for Swanson on second and five. Now Duncan motions up as a tight end. Play action. Swanson throws it up on the skinny post for Madsen. Wasn't able to bring it down at its highest point. Third down coming up. Now Swanson has thrown some absolute dimes today and then just a few that have been just out of the reach of a very talented wide receiving core here for Aurora. Now Don Beebe, if you're not familiar, of course a sensational wide receiver during his professional career. Certainly knows how to coach up the wide receiving core. Here's a Hitch route for Madsen along the hash marks. He'll make the catch at the sticks and then push it across to the 33. Be a gain of nine and Aurora's 21st first down of the day. Swanson up over 300 yards passing on the day. And approaching 2,700 yards on the season. On first and 10 here, he'll throw it quick out to the near sideline. And oh my goodness, that's a terrific catch by Ty Pruitt on the near sideline. He's done a lot of that as a sophomore here for the Spartans. That'll be first down. Gain of 10. Pro from Wimberley High School, Cedar Creek, Texas. I would expect that he will have quite a few more catches next season. Empty backfield here as Creedon motions out of it, then takes the ball on the outside. He'll slice up field at the numbers first down and more inside the 10 down near the five. Aurora's offense picking up yards in bunches now. First and goal from the five coming up. 18 more for Josh. In all probability, going to end the regular season leading Division Three with at least 42 touchdown passes. And we'll see if maybe he'll pick up his fifth today. 419 left in the third, 35-0 Aurora for now. Threatening as they move into the red zone yet again. Empty backfield, Martino motions back, takes it in the flat, and he'll walk in for the touchdown. Oh, well, Maltino had not had a catch today. His first one is his third touchdown catch of the year. And there is number 43 this season for Swanson on his senior day. 
4.02 left, third quarter. And the road back getting very long here for the Falcons. Heilig for the PAT. It's a nice job by Bolin. That snap a little flat as it got to him. Gets it up. Heilig boots it through. 42 0, 402 left in the third. All Aurora closing in on the automatic qualifier for the NCAA playoffs. This is Aurora University football. Two nothing here. 4:02 left in the third. Thomas will field this kickoff here at his own 10-yard line, and then be wrapped up and tossed over the 20. Certainly appearing that it is going to be a disappointing end to what otherwise has been a very good season for Concordia, Wisconsin. Again, they lost their knack opener to Benedictine, who at the time had established itself as one of the top offenses in the country. And they, they didn't just lose by a little bit. They were routed by the Eagles and then peeled off six straight wins to put themselves in position where a win over Aurora would have put them in the playoffs, and it is not going to happen. Here's a slant route for Campbell that was thrown behind him. If you're Aurora, and mentioned this a, a moment ago off the air, you know, the Spartans, you know, when, when you win the championship over and over again, every week you get every team's very best effort. And certainly you get used to that, and Aurora has handled that very well this season. Here's Lynn under some pressure. He'll flip it out to the sideline, no gain there. Lynn's pass is incomplete. And I, I am not sure that we have gotten the very best that the Falcons have to offer and that is that is not saying that there's been a lack of effort but the execution has not been there I think that the Falcons have done everything they've been able to it has just not been a very good day especially offensively for the Falcons and you know, on the other hand I have to say this this is what Aurora has done to their opponents all season four receivers here Lynn in the shotgun, throws it to the sideline out of the reach of a diving Campbell. Lynn's pass is incomplete in and a three and out here as once again, the Falcons will have to punt. And lopsided enough at this point that you start to wonder how much longer we'll see the Spartan first team out here. Kaczynski to punt it today. The sixth time. Spiral kick here. Maltino fields it at his own 36. Cuts up field at the hash marks and he'll go to the turf at his own 45. Return, he was brought down at the 45 yard line in Spartan territory. Will take over. Uh, Swanson and the first team will come back out, but I would have to believe that if this ends in six, then that will likely be the end of the day for the first team here. 329 left, 42 to nothing. I think you've seen the enthusiasm up and down the Spartan sideline. And as you might imagine, Don Beebe, I think, will be the first to admit he's learned a lot from former head coach in Buffalo, Marv Levy, and he said that 
Coach Levy would tell him, I don't draft guys I have to motivate. I draft motivated guys, and that has certainly been the approach here. Here's Creedon on first down, takes it outside, turns up field of the numbers, the and takes carries. the pile out near the, the sticks. Down to the a gain of nine here for Creedon. Uh, Coach Beebe talked about how they try to create an atmosphere that's fun where team likes to go to practice, but he also says they, they play games together. They've gone bowling together. And I, I think you can really see that. This is a team that really roots for each other. Uh, they've enjoyed a lot of each other's success here. Here's Creedon. He'll get the first down. Takes that off tackle down to the 42-yard line. First down in 10 for the Spartans from the Concordia 42 So for Jaquay, and I get my math right here, he was 86 yards away from 2,000 at the start of the day, and I think he is on the number here for Aurora. First and 10. And here is Tavion Jeans, who will take it up the middle. Tavion Jeans, the ball carrier. Tavion had a terrific game last week, and I know Don Beebe was very pleased. An injury timeout coming here after Jeans gains four. So we'll hold that thought. Injury timeout here with a minute 56 left in the third. Snow shower is beginning here. Aurora University men's football here at athletics.aurora.edu. It looks like it's going to be I think the injured player is up being helped off here. I believe that was Justice Canetta going off and been a top player for the Falcons defense this season. Also, Jaquay right now very close to having the third best single season in Aurora history. It's going to be very close. We'll have to see what the numbers are. Tavion Jeans here on second and six up the middle, first down. He'll be tackled across the 30. Right now, Creedon. Again, I mentioned he was at 1,914 for his career. He is at exactly 86 yards <laughs> for exactly 2,000 for his career. And so he becomes the eighth player in Aurora history to reach the 2,000-yard mark. Any guesses on the career leader for Aurora in rushing yards? Here's Jeans again here on first down, short gain Jeans up to the 28. Let me Ty Bailey. Probably not going to be much of a surprise to many of you. 4,136 yards. Ball, ball. What a career he's had in now Jaquay Creedon having a sensational single season. Second down and eight yards to go. So Creedon as it stands right now at 1,156 yards on the season. That was the fourth best single season in Spartan history. Derek Teeman back in 1992 rushed for 1,233 in nine games. That is the AU single season record and Creedon will have a shot at that next week. Swanson rolls left, throws it up into the end zone into double coverage. Bounces around a couple of times and falls incomplete. That was Jeffrey Brezonic who was in in coverage there. Made a nice play. Third and eight coming up here with six seconds to play in the third. Aurora leading 42 to nothing. Creedon back in. And he may 
they get up over Ron Griffin's mark here on this play potentially and they hand him the football two receivers tight end Madsen high snap past Swanson who will fall on it and give himself up to end the quarter loss of 14 we'll go to the fourth Aurora up 42 to nothing, 15 minutes away from an outright NAC championship in the NCAA tournament. This is Aurora University football. Fourth quarter about to begin. Aurora will punt it here on the first play of the quarter. Landis punt with the wind will be fielded at the 16 and not fair caught. It's a risky decision by the freshman Nick Crowell. like Concordia will take over at their own 18. Sean Fryer with you. The regular season finale for Aurora. Taking a look at the regional rankings, Aurora right now fourth in Region 5. Will probably come as no surprise to any of you that North Central is number one, as they are number one in the nation in the D3Football.com poll. First and 10 here, Lynn throws it out near side. That's complete. Not a huge gain that time for Colin Rarsich. Gain of three. Jason Burris in on the stop for the Spartans. Gain of three on the play, second down and seven yards. North Central concluding its season as we speak at home against Augustana. And that is 56 to three, North Central leading that one in the third quarter. Second and seven here, that's Rarsich again. Wartburg, second in the regional rankings ahead of Aurora. Their regular season finale is on the road at Coe in the American Rivers Conference and Wartburg is leading that one midway through the fourth quarter, 19 to 14. And then third in the regional rankings is Wheaton, who knocked out Aurora postseason last year. They're concluding at home against North Park today. And that is all Wheaton in that one, 54 to nothing early in the fourth. Lynn rolling out here on third down, and a flag comes in. As the pass was intended for Nick Crowell. And they're going to get Martin Milan for a hold here. So that will make it third and three. Uh, stand corrected. Defensive holding. That's an automatic first down. Then they move the football to the 30 from the spot. So it certainly appears that all three teams ahead of Aurora will be winning. And for North Central and Wartburg, that would mean the automatic qualifier as well. 
Looks like Aurora is going to join them there, and then Whedon will be hoping for an at-large. First and 10 here from the 30 early in the fourth quarter. Aurora leading 42 to nothing. And here is Lynn handing it off for Thomas. Takes it out across the 30 on the sideline. He'll be run out of bounds. Short gain here. Be a gain of a couple. Monmouth, fifth in the regional rankings. They have finished things off. Defeating Knox in the Turkey Bowl, 56 to nothing. So Monmouth will be waiting to find out what will be going on with them. And then it's Rippon and Wash U rounding out the regional rankings. Second and eight. Play action, and Lynn hit as he throws. That was scooped up by Otis Watts, who thought he was going in for six. I think that's the right call, but a lot of Jalen Jordan in there in a hurry. And Aurora has just continued to impose their will increasingly as the game has gone along. Third and eight here. Spartan crowd getting loud again. One safety high here against the four receiver look for the Falcons. Lynn is in trouble under significant pressure and he underthrew Campbell. And we'll see the punt unit again here for a CUW. So James Maltino will get another look at it here. The Nation's leader in punt return touchdowns, one of the best in the nation in punt return average. Even today, Maltino, 24 yards on three returns. Averages about 14 per return for the season. Now this kick, end over end on a line, Maltino will let it go and then it ends up being touched at the 35, that's where it'll be down. 12-27 remaining in this one. Flag is on the play here, for whatever that's worth. Thirty-five twenty-eight, Wisconsin Lutheran leading at Benedictine later in the third, holding on Aurora. back the Spartans to the 25 yard line and, and Lakeland up 42 to 21 in the third quarter. Let's check in on AU women's hockey right now. Spartans up 2 nothing in the first period. And we have the ability to Check in on men's hockey as well, as you might imagine. And that one is 2-1 Spartans in the first period. He's brought down near the 30-yard line. He's got enough for another AU. So he started the drive on the 20-yard line, 10-yard gain on first down. One last one to check here, folks. AU women's basketball has just gotten underway at Webster. And it's 23-13 after the first quarter. Webster in front. Another run up the middle on first down here and five more for Aurora. As Jaquay Creedon. Continuing to add to his yardage today. Eleven twenty-six to play, fourth quarter here, forty-two to nothing as Aurora closes in on the automatic qualifier. Creedon seventeen carries, ninety-six yards, and they will go over the one hundred yard mark. Over midfield. 
Now to the Concordia 47. How about eight 100-yard games this season for Jaquay Creedon? What a season that young man has had. So the clock continuing the run here and to run out on the Falcon season. Pistol look here for Aurora. Kavion Jeans spins off a tackle up the middle and out for a gain of nine. We start to run out of words a little bit for what Aurora has done this year against, especially against Nat competition. Second and two here. Here's Jeans again, first down, keeps on churning out to the 30. First down, Aurora. That's 28 now on the day. This will be the 31st consecutive NAC victory for Aurora. This continues to be in the top five in the nation. And that's not just Division Three; That is all divisions. And then they will be extending their home winning streak to 17. That's a top five mark in Division Three, top 15 in the whole nation. There are nine and a half now remaining in the fourth, 42 nothing. Here's Jeans. Trying to stretch it out here, and it'll be taken down to the backfield. Good penetration that time by the Falcons. A rare loss of yardage. A Spartan running game. But the domination in this one, Spartans have outgained Concordia, Wisconsin, 479 to 188. Spartans have five takeaways in this one. Four picks and a fumble recovery. Cam Moore getting the jet sweep here. He turns upfield. We'll get back player. between the chains. He's inside the 30. Down to the 28 here, gain of five. Down to the 28-yard line. Well, Cam Moore has just had a Phenomenal day here. Six catches, 94 yards. Hasn't run the football here in a little bit. Eight twelve remaining. Two receivers here out on the near side. Moore is in the slot. And Jeans took the handoff and tripped. That's a tough break. He loses a yard. And so we'll see the field goal unit come on here, and that is Matthew Heilick who will attempt a field goal here for just the second time in his career. Missed from 38 at Concordia, Chicago. This would be a 46-yard field goal. He does have the wind at his back. There's seven and a half left in the fourth. Heilig for the first field goal make of his career. Line drive, not enough. And the kick is no good. And the Falcons will take over. Receivers. Near side. And James Lynn will hand it off to Rarisich here. Jet sweep near side. Takes some contact at the 30. And that'll be the end of the play there after a gain of a couple. 
one way or the other, not going to end the way that CUW would have liked. And I don't think that should take anything away from the terrific season that they've had. Somehow the Falcons just find a way to be in the mix in the knack and the uh, tough situation for head coach Greg Etter is going to be runner up in the knack for the sixth time he's going to share second place with St. Norbert. This one is intercepted for the fifth time today and here come the Spartans down the far sideline. Trying to see who that was with the interception. Passes intercepted by number 28, Deuce That is Deuce Moore with his second interception of the season. Moore from Lepanto, Arkansas. And say you the football back and they'll take over at the Concordia 27. Forty-two to nothing. And that is Ian Luando into the contest for Aurora. He'll hand the football off here to Tavion Jeans on first down and we'll get out to the twenty-five. Do not believe we will see Aurora throw the football again. Second and eight coming up as the clock ticks down inside of six minutes. 42 nothing. A few new faces into the game. There's Karsten Poole for Aurora. Cole Jackson has checked in. Connor Bright is in on the near side. And out on the far sideline as well. And a handoff Tavion Jeans, head of steam across the 20. Jeans, the ball carrier. Yeah, I believe that is. I thought I saw Connor White out on the far side of the formation, but I think actually I saw Zach Russell. Aurora back into the red zone, third and two coming up. 42 0 Aurora closing in on 500 yards gained for the contest. Run option here, Luando. He has the first down as he ducks the shoulder and is taken down to the 14. So next up here for Aurora will be patiently waiting for a little more than 24 hours from now. Selection Sunday is November 13th at 4 o'clock. And if you're not one to look at the calendar, and apparently I'm not, that's tomorrow. I think that was obvious. I said a little more than 24 hours, but you know, try to clarify here where you can. Lando bobbled that snap, ends up having to take it himself and he'll lose some yardage here. It's actually rather impressive that he got that back to the line of scrimmage, or even anywhere close to it, to be completely honest with you. He'll lose, looks like three on the play. Under four to play in this one. Wanda with jeans. Pistol look here for the Spartans. Jeans hits the hole with speed and ends up being tackled by the referee. I believe I just heard a well-deserved come on man out there. <laughs> Tough break for Tavion Jeans. <laughs> believe that would have been a touchdown. Ends up with a gate of 10, and it's third and three. I'll give it to Tavion again. This time bounces off the line, tries to slip forward. It'll be close. I think he'll be down to the five. It'll be fourth and one coming up. You know, when you're that back judge, you're just trying not to be an extra safety out there, but sometimes it 
Oh, you know, life comes at you fast, right? A tough break down there for Tavion. Fourth and one here. It's like from the five-yard line. Tight end in motion. Robert Cooper. Jeans gets the handoff and just ran over the defender. They're not even going to measure the football here. They're going to give it back to Concordia, Wisconsin. Uh, they'll spot him a half yard short, looks like. Turnover on downs, and CUW will have it here. I don't think there's going to be a ton of protest from the Aurora sideline at this point in the football game. So the final snaps of the season for CUW coming up. And Aurora will not have long to wait to celebrate. Offense finishing with 504 yards on 78 plays, nearly six and a half yards per play. Josh Swanson, 24 of 41 for 333 yards, five touchdowns and an interception. Trey Madsen, six catches for 101 yards and a touchdown. Cam Moore, six receptions, 94 yards and two scores. Michael Boland, Jaquay Creed in each four catches. Ty Pruitt had three catches and a touchdown. James Maltino had one five-yard touchdown catch. And then Creedon rushed 18 times for a buck 14 and a touchdown. 47 yards on 12 touches for Tavion Jeans. First down and 10 for Concordia from their own 18-yard line. Final 2-10 remaining here. Spartans finish up 7 of 14 on third down, 1 for 3 on fourth down. They've had the football for nearly 34 minutes. And Aurora doesn't frequently have the time of possession advantage in, in some part because they just score very quickly, Alon. They only averaged on the season 28 15 of possession. That was bottom three. Concordia, Wisconsin, one of the teams to have it less than them. And 26-39 on average. That was last in the NAC, one of the bottom 20 in the nation. And that was obviously not a great combination for the Falcons. They really needed to find a way to slow the game down. And we're not able to do that. Ultimately, the story of the game will be turnovers. Five interceptions. James Lynn, who right now is 12 of 33 for 125 yards. But Aurora now just 60 seconds away from a second straight shutout to end the season. This one for the AQ. Falcons right now, 205 yards on 56 plays, under four yards per play, 81 yards rushing, 125 passing. It's a difficult day under difficult conditions for the Falcons. They are all tied, Benedictine and Wisconsin Lutheran, 35 all early in the fourth. Lakeland up 48-21 over Rockford. St. Norbert has ended its season with a 55 to nothing win over Concordia Chicago. And finally, Aurora. The outright Northern Athletics Collegiate Conference champions for 2022, 42 to nothing. They defeat Concordia University, Wisconsin. A perfect 8 and 0 in the NAC, 9 and 1 on the season and the Spartans earn the automatic qualifier to the NCAA Division III playoffs. Time of the game, two hours, 38 minutes. And it was Aurora from the very start all the way to the finish in this one. The trophy presentation is coming up. This is Aurora University football.
42 to nothing. Aurora finishes the season, or the regular season anyway, with an emphatic shutout victory over CUW. And now, after a brief huddle here amongst the Spartans, it's time for the NAC Championship Trophy presentation. Where we have the 2022 Northern Athletic Collegiate Conference Championship Trophy presentation. Commissioner Jeff Ligney is on hand. Twenty twenty two NAC football championship trophy Northern to the Spartans. Conference Commissioner Jeff Ligney is on hand to present the Aurora University Spartans with Trey Madsen, among others, over to trophy. receive the trophy. The Spartans will represent the NAC as the automatic qualifier in the NCAA Division Three football championship field. That field will be announced. And the Spartans get to deservedly celebrate. 